G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. It is still draft time, which means all the content at the moment is going to be focused on the upcoming National AFL Draft, which happens in the middle of next week. I think Wednesday and Thursday of next week, we will be doing the live streams on the channel as well. So hope to have you guys join in with us for all the fun. You may have seen already, I have done a podcast with Nightmare slash Chris Dory from ESPN just a couple of uploads ago. So if you want to hear an interview from someone who really knows what they're talking about, not like me, go check out that podcast. It's also available on Spotify and iTunes as well. Further to that, you would have seen I've released a top 20 mock draft which is kind of like a part one of the mock. We're going to do another longer mock, you know, closer to the draft sometime next week. But in today's video, I'm going to do a little bit of a focus video on the West Coast Eagles. I do do these kinds of vids every now and then. And in particular, focusing on the sort of needs that the Eagles have and the players that I want them to be targeting in this year's draft. If you're not an Eagles fan, there's still going to be a little bit of discussion about, you know, five or six prospects rated in that 10 to 20 range as well. So there is probably a little bit in this for you guys as well. But as always, guys, if you are new to the channel, make sure you consider subscribing to the channel. Draft time really is one of my favorite times of the year as well. So hopefully we can provide some half decent content for you guys as well in the lead up to the big day. But anyway, let's talk about the West Coast Eagles and in particular, their sort of needs going into this draft. Going into any draft, there is a host of teams that need to nail the draft. But I definitely think from a West Coast perspective, this looms as a very, very important draft. We haven't taken a first round pick since Jared Brander in 2017. And before that, Daniel Venables in 2016 and both of those players were delisted for different reasons at the end of this particular season. So it really does speak to that narrative of a lack of quality youth at the West Coast Eagles. I don't think it's obscenely dire, but it's also comparatively against some other big teams. You know, you could make the argument the Eagles are doomed to fall off a cliff at some point in the future. I don't think it's as, as near as people are suggesting, but regardless, even before the, you know, the terrible year that we had in 2021, I looked at our list and I thought we really, really need to hit the draft pretty soon. A big factor in that is is obviously the Tim Kelly deal where we traded out two years with draft picks, basically first and second rounders. But, you know, obviously we're just a top heavy list that has been, you know, in the premiership swing for the last few years. As a result, we've topped up. We've gone for the mature route as well. So kind of neglected the 18 to 21 year old sort of part of our list. And that's why this draft is really, really important for us to get right. I'm still somewhat confident about where our list sits. I don't think, you know, the, the end is as close as people are suggesting as I've, I've said previously, but we've still got a few years to go in and with a few good drafts, we can make that transition a lot easier. But obviously conversely, if we don't do well in these particular drafts, then shit really could hit the fan in a couple of years. But I think we've done a few shrewd moves of, you know, trading in some 20 to 23 year old players from other clubs. Guys like Alex Witherden, who was a former top 20 pick. Sam Petrovsky seed was pick six. They're obviously not projecting as, you know, elite talents who are going to single-handedly win us the premiership and make the transition super easily by themselves. But they're obviously not world beaters in themselves. But I like that we've sort of isolated a part of the list that needed bolstering. And now we can further that by adding some really quality 18-year-old talent. So what do the West Coast Eagles need? Well, uh, when you look at our list, there's probably not too many areas of the field that we're not deficient in in the 18 to 22-year-old sort of bracket. So in particular, I think the young midfield is an area of concern. I think our youngest midfielder in the best 22 is Dom Shade, who would be 27 going into next year. It's actually difficult to isolate too many midfielders that we have under the age of 25. We've just added Connor West through the mid-season draft. He's about 21, 22, if I'm not mistaken. Other than that, you've got Luke Edwards, who's 19 slash 20. Then you're looking at some genuine rookies in Zane True and Izzy Winder. Winder did crack one game, but obviously between True and Winder, there's no guarantee these guys are going to even be good enough for AFL. You could even extend that to Edwards, but I think I really did like what I saw from Edwards in particular that game against Richmond. He had 27 possessions, 10 in the last quarter, and generally look like AFL standard as well. So regardless of all that, if you compare our under-22 midfield against, you know, any other club, to be honest, it looks really, really dire. So we haven't spent a first-round draft pick on a midfielder since 2013 in Dom Sheed. I don't know if you include Venables. I think maybe the goal eventually was for him to become a midfielder, but did spend almost his entire career at West Coast as a medium forward. So I don't know if you can really count that. So really, we're looking at Dom sheet as the last midfielder we drafted inside the first round. We do need a key position forward. That is true. We did draft Brander in 2017 and obviously that experiment failed because, you know, he couldn't crack a game, but I think there's partly also the fact that he wasn't quite good enough as a key forward to crack that opportunity. So past Kennedy, we're looking at a forward line of Darling, Waterman and Allen, but even Darling's, you know, 30 years old next year. So longer term, we do need a key position forward. However, I don't know if this is the draft where I hope we take it, particularly not in the first round. It's a shallow draft for key position talent 
talent generally. If at pick 29, say a Jack Williams is still available on the board, I'd support us taking him there. But but say with pick 12, you know, if we pounce on a Jai Amos who's missed the top 10, then I'm not saying I would be mad because I do think he could be a pretty good player in Eagles colors. But generally speaking, it, this is a big opportunity for us to draft a first round midfield talent, which we sorely lack. We also need a genuine Ruckman that can probably come later in the draft. I don't think there's going to be one around our range unless Mac Andrew does slip. But generally speaking, it's not enough of an immediate need for us to take one in the first round. So I'm hoping that we're looking for midfielders both inside and out. We really don't need a key position defender either. And midfield is generally, you know, your general sort of medium defenders, not really a position of need for us. We've just recruited with it and you've got guys like Cole and Nelson who you might not think are world beaters by any stretch, but they're best 22 players who are still, you know, on the right side of 25. So I don't think we'll be looking at a halfback flanker unless they have some very specific qualities and attributes, which I will allude to later in this video. But without dragging on too much, let's talk about some specific prospects that I'm hoping the Eagles look at with pick 12 and beyond. So if you're looking online for a consensus from Eagles fans on who they want to draft, there seems to be a real preference for, you know, one of Matthew Johnson or Neil Erasmus with our first pick. But I do tend to think that is a lot of wishful thinking at play here because as it stands, I don't think either of them are actually going to be available for the West Coast Eagles pick at pick 12. We do also have this tendency of, you know, just linking the West Australian player with the West Australian club. But I did a bit of research a while back, but we actually haven't drafted a West Australian in the first round of the draft since 2013 in Dom Sheed, but also only five times in the last 20 years. So this idea that the Eagles will pick a West Australian player just because they're West Australian is probably a little bit fanciful, to be honest. They may be the best available player, but if they're not, I don't think we're going to pick them just on that basis. That being said, I'll offer a very strong caveat to that, and that's the fact that this is in another COVID-affected year where, you know, last year we saw prospects had missed a whole chunk of footy due to lockdowns. Well, this year we got players who have missed potentially large parts of two years. In particular, we're talking about those Victorian players where there was significantly less football in that state compared to Western Australia. So by that logic, all the prospects from Victoria in theory come with an element of risk and that may indicate that the Eagles and other clubs generally may go a more conservative route and opt for, you know, West Australian or South Australian prospects in particular. But regardless of all that, as much as I want Erasmus, who's a big bodied sort of forward midfielder and a Matthew Johnson, who's been compared to like a bigger bodied Pendlebury, as much as those would be a great fit for West coast and their needs i just don't think either of them will be available but if i had to rank it i'd say erasmus is my favorite out of those followed slightly by johnson but to be honest i'd be happy with either of them but when doing this exercise we need to look at all the realistic possibilities and i just don't think either of them are going to be available for our pick so let's talk about some players who i genuinely think will be available and i want to start off with my new current favorite he's a player that west coast hasn't been linked to at all in this draft and to be honest i really don't think that's you know much of an indication to be honest i don't think the media actually has a very good indication of what West Coast are actually thinking. I don't think there was any media suggestion the Eagles were going to draft Brander in 17. And, you know, Venables in 16 were apparently looking at Pal Pepper, Gallucci, or Jared Berry, and we ended up reaching for Daniel Venables. This year is another one where I think I've read articles that were linked to a Gota and a Josh Rochelle. But I love the fact that the Eagles play their cards close to their chest. And one player I think really fits this mold is Arlo Draper. Now, if you watch my mock draft, I have the Eagles taking him at pick 12, so this might not be much of a big surprise to you, but he's my current favorite in terms of the skill set that he offers us. Nightmare ranks him at 12 in his current power rankings, which is ironically the pick that we currently have. He compares him to a Robbie Gray style player. He's 185 centimeters from South Australia and just 71 kilos. So slightly lightly built, but interestingly, his skill set seems to be, you know, contested ball winning. So funnily enough, he's sort of like a, a lightly built player who is good at winning the contested ball, but according to Nightmare, does struggle winning the easy outside ball. He's a really strong overhead player who could start his career, I think, predominantly as a medium forward, but can push up the ground, even into defense as a back half player who can really use the ball well as well. He's a really clean and classy player when he plays in the midfield as well, and he's got genuine midfield ability, and that excites me. So we're talking about a player with genuine utility. He can play forward, back, and in the midfield, but has genuine potential to become a midfielder. I think that is the perfect sort of prospect we're looking at here. He ticks the box of being a good ball user as well. Well, which I think is a big need at the West Coast Eagles. I think it's just part of their drafting philosophy is to generally take good ball users by foot. I generally think this guy will be available and I think he ticks the boxes. If you're looking past the obvious types of Erasmus and Johnson, I think Draper shapes as a very West Coast Eagles pick and we do have a tendency to like our forward of center plays as well. I remember back in the day we used to draft, you know, an oversupply of halfback flankers and I feel like in the last three or four years we've switched to that and we really like our medium forwards who can play in the midfield. Further to that, and I've made this point previously that I felt 
felt like our most talented players outside the best 22 were probably Brander, Venables, and Cameron, all sort of medium forward slash midfield options. But all three of those players have now left the club as well. And despite Rioli coming back in, I think that will leave a bit of a gap for us to draft another sort of forward type player. So that is my current preference is Arlo Draper for that pick 12. And I do genuinely think he's available. But let's talk about some other options as well. Now I talked about earlier how we don't need a halfback flanker as such. And it's true. We don't really have a positional need for a player of that type unless they have the very specific skill set of leg speed and elite ball use. And there's a couple of players around the range of our pick in Josh Sin and Naziah Wanganin Miller, who really would come into the side and add an immediate point of difference. Sin's a player I've talked about previously on this channel. He's a rebounding halfback left-footed defender. Got a raking left foot. I really like the way he uses the ball attackingly. And in addition to that, his leg speed really would add something different to us. And similarly, Wanganin Miller, a South Australian prospect who obviously has family ties to Port Adelaide. He's a pretty tall fella at 188 centimeters, but just 70 kilos and just really one of the most skillful players in this draft. And that really plays into the Eagles philosophy of taking good ball users. And I think back to when the Eagles were a good side, you know, 2018 to 2020 and Lewis Jetta and his ball use and even Willie Rioli forward of center, the, the way they would use the ball was a real hallmark of the way we played. And that's where I think a Sin or Wanganin Miller could really appeal to West Coast recruiters. I could see a Sin or a Wanganin Miller playing, you know, maybe not round one, but you know, round five and beyond and adding something immediately. So while I would prefer a midfielder, I could see us seriously considering Sin and Wanganin Miller. Then past that, you look looking at some other midfield options and ones that are likely going to be available. I mean, we could talk about a Ben Hobbs or a Josh Ward, but I just don't think they're going to be quite in their range. So some players that we could potentially reach for that are genuine inside midfielders would be in particular, Mitch Nevitt, first of all. Now, based on general rankings, this is a little bit early for his range, but he is quite a unique prospect and that might lend himself to being taken a little bit earlier than expected. He's compared to Paddy Creeps and the reason being he's 194 centimeters. So an absolutely monstrous midfielder from the Geelong Falcons. As you can imagine, his strengths are the fact that he is physically strong, he's tall, he's an absolute contested beast, but perhaps the downside to him is that he lacks impact per possession. And while he does definitely offer something immediately that we don't have on our list, and I would be pretty satisfied if we did take a player of his particular type, I do wonder if, you know, these sorts of types could be drafted sort of later in the draft as well, whereas I think we could stand to pick a player with a bit more hurt factor with a pick as early as 12. That being said, you know, the contested ball is a genuine weakness at the West Coast Eagles, so picking an inside midfielder like Nevitt really would add a point of difference to us. So I wouldn't complain about that. Another option is Josh Goda, who, as I understand, it's probably more of a intercepting sort of defender, but at 191 centimeters, he's been talked about as having genuine midfield utility as well. And that's the thing we have to sort of understand about the prospects around our range. If you don't have a genuine top 10 pick, you're not going to pick an absolutely complete, well-rounded midfielder who's going to be a gun. There will generally be some sort of knock on them. So it may be that they're sort of vanilla and maybe don't have the same impact per possession. Or, you know, in the case of Goto, maybe they just haven't completely proven themselves in the position of being a midfielder. So that's the risk you take with him. But the thing about his upside is that he's extremely athletic, extremely agile. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Shui in the way that he sort of frees himself up from congestion. He uses the ball well by hand. So he ticks a few boxes there when you're looking at a prospective midfielder. So I do really like the look of Josh Goder. It sounds like he could be a bolter for the top 10, but I think I, in my mock, I had him at about pick 19. So he could sort of fall anywhere between those 10 picks, which means he is a realistic consideration for our pick. I think there was an article linking us to him, but I think it was just simply because he had West Australian relatives. Again, what I like about Goder is that he adds a point of difference. And like I said, when you're picking outside the top 10, if you want to land a genuinely elite player who has a high ceiling, you're probably going to have to take a bit of a risk on a player who has some deficiencies. So he wouldn't be my first pick, but if we did decide to go for a high ceiling inside midfielder, one of Nevitt or Goto, I'd be pretty happy with. So those are probably my primary preferences for pick 12. Obviously, if a Warder Hobbs is available and they slide a little bit later than expected, that's also a pretty welcome thing. I don't know about Ward though. He seems to have some issues about leaving Victoria. So that's a bit of a no-no for me. If we did go the key position route, I do think that any of Mac Andrew, Van Ruin or Jai Amos were actually pretty reasonable prospects in that they're talented enough where I could see them being long-term best available players, but I do just think our midfield is the main focus for us this draft. So we can talk a little bit about our later picks, pick 29 and 36, and it's a little bit harder to speculate because obviously there's so many variables and so many different players that could be available at this pick. What I'll generally sort of say is that it really depends on who we take with our first pick as to who we consider with our second based on, you know, different skill sets. So for instance, if we pick a genuine inside ball with pick 12, do we need to load up on two more inside mids at 29 and 36? I think probably not. One thing I am half expecting is that we 
we pounce on a Greg Clark either with 29 or 36. Supposedly, we tried to talk him into nominating for the midseason draft. He opted to stay playing for Subiaco. So if that's true, that suggests we do have some sort of interest in him. Obviously, we ended up drafting Connor West, who I think, despite also being a mature age midfielder, is quite a different style of midfielder. Greg Clark, something like six foot four, nearly six foot five. So one thing I'm kind of thinking is that the Eagles are lining up Clark for 29, which I think is a little bit early for what people would expect him to go. That means we might feel like we're freed up a little bit to take a non-genuine inside mid with that pick 12. Another player I think that will be generally interested in in this sort of late 20s, early 30s range is Jesse Motlop from South Fremantle, a small forward, son of Daniel as well, and you know, not a dissimilar player. And I think, again, he's a sort of player who has the attributes that would appeal to West Coast as that forward of center player. With Jared Cameron leaving the club, I think the Eagles have a little spot opened up for a smaller forward as well in that same mold. I don't know if he's going to be available at pick 29. I just think the Eagles will take him if he's available. So to round out the video, guys, I'm going to offer my three predicted, my three predicted picks for the West Coast Eagles. And I do kind of hope I'm right about these. So at pick 12, I think the Eagles will take Arlo Draper from South Australia, leaving at pick 29. I think we will probably pounce on Greg Clark. Good thing about Clark is, you know, being a mature age player, he can come in and impact as depth straight away. And then obviously in a couple of years where Shuey and Redden have faded off into the sunset, we've got an established midfield player as well. It is a reach at 29, but I'm kind of expecting we do that. Then that leaves us a little bit more freedom with our third pick. And I think we'll take a genuine outside mid and it's going to be one of maybe Corey Warner from Western Australia, younger brother of Chad, who was a genuine outside sort of wingman classy player, complete the opposite of his brother, Chad. So it'd be one of Corey Warner or Hugh Jackson from South Australia, another sort of smaller built outside midfielder who adds a bit of class and could play fairly early, I believe. But anyway, guys, that will wrap up this particular video on the West Coast Eagles and the 2021 AFL draft. It's my attempt at draft analysis, but I hope all of that made sense and was coherent. Really excited for the draft, guys. Really think it's an important one for the Eagles to get right. So I'll be paying great attention. And you know, this is the first draft we've had a first rounder in for four years. So this is the most excited I am for an Eagles draft in, you know, four years. But anyway, guys, let me know in the comments what you think the Eagles Eagles need whether you're an Eagles fan or not and if you are an Eagles fan also let us know who are you hoping that we draft with pick 12 and anyway guys thanks for watching subscribe to the channel if you're new and I'll see you in the next video cheers